Good morning, everyone. I am honored and humbled to stand here to represent Class 18. My name is Hibak Suleiman. I interned at LinkedIn as a data analyst. Today, I'll be sharing my story with you. I was born in Somalia. At the age of two, my family migrated to Uganda to escape the dangers in Somalia. My dad worked hard to make sure we were safe. We moved several times from village to village. The only hope my family had was to come to America. And I remember how happy we were when we found out we were on that list. However, the following year, there was a day I would never forget. It was Friday morning and I heard my neighbor crying and screaming. I was curious. So I followed where the screaming was coming from. Finally, I ended up running into my siblings. Seeing the tears in my sister's eyes, I knew it was something to do with my mother. My mom left in the middle of the night with my dad to go to the hospital because she was pregnant and ready to give birth. The refugee camp hospital was around eight hours away from us. My mom lost a lot of blood. She and the baby ended up passing away before they could even make it to the hospital. At the age of four, I experienced the death of my mother, which left me Angry, frustrated, and confused. It took us two years to come to America, but unfortunately, my mom didn't make it. At the age of six, I began my life in Portland, Maine. I, I, I remember staying at the shelter with my dad, my sisters, and my little brother. I was so excited to start a new life in America. I was so happy when my dad registered us for school. I struggled, I struggled a lot learning English because when I went home, my family spoke three different languages, Somali, Swahili, and Arabic. I was young, but I can see the difference between America and Africa. I felt like I was living the American dream. My life was getting better each day. Years went by and my dad decided to move us to North Dakota so we can be close to my older sister. My goal was to graduate from high school and pursue a degree in biochemistry. I always made sure I was on top of my grades and my homework. My last couple years in high school, my counselor refused to register me to the class I wanted to take as a college credit. I was mad and hurt because of this experience. I felt like I was locked out of certain opportunities due to my background. I was so angry for being a minority, but I still graduated from high school. For the next four years, I decided to work and not attend college because of my negative experience in high school. My dad wasn't happy about my decision, but I was a teenager going through my own insecurities. As I started getting older, I felt like I was leaving, as I started getting older, I felt like I wasn't leaving the American dream anymore. I realized when people looked at me, they judged or discriminated against me 
because of my gender, race, and religion. Being a minority in America is hard, but two things kept me going. The struggles I went through in Africa and seeing my family members work low wage jobs to provide for us. I realize it's okay to go through things, but not to look at yourself as a victim. I learned that if you're resilient, opportunity will knock on your door. My last job in North Dakota told me a lot about myself. I was working with teenagers with mental illnesses and behavioral problems. All they wanted was for someone to listen, care for them, and it felt so good being a role model for them. Working with those kids helped me deal with my own insecurities. They made me realize you can do anything in this world if you put your heart to it. <laughs> I decided to quit my job and move to California for school. I was so amazed by the diversity and knowing that there are so many people like me. <laughs> California gave me hope. I was looking forward to going back to school, but I couldn't pay the out-of-state tuition. I was, I was kind of disappointed and didn't know what to do. Then I came across a year up. I couldn't believe what I was reading. They pay you to go to school? You gain college credits and get an internship at corporate companies? After, com after completing the admission process, I received my acceptance letter to attend a year up. I was so happy but I didn't know what I was signing up for. I, I didn't know I was signing up for a crazy roller coaster ride. And I'm sure that's how all of us felt this year. I was so nervous and excited at the same time. I was ready for a change. During pre-orientation week, I was so scared because I didn't know anyone, but I was hungry for opportunities. Day by day, we started building a community. L&D was challenging for most of us. We had to follow a contract. If you didn't meet expectations, you earned yourself an infraction. We all hated earning infractions. But we learned something from it. For many of us, the scariest time was Friday feedback, when our program manager read everyone's contract points for the week. It also hurt to hear certain colleagues of mine struggle with low points. Our community was built on trust, respect, and working together as a team. Public speaking was challenging for me, but look at me now. With the help of my learning community, LCH, and my colleagues, Jorge Batista, Sergio Zamora, Elijah Tomalatai, and Pedro Martinez, I was able to improve and grow in this. Europe gave me the opportunity to always believe in myself and go for what I want. If it wasn't for Kenny, Kenny Chim, Abe Menor, Charles Howard, Thomas Bazzi, Valerie Brown, and Grace Kim, I wouldn't, know, I wouldn't be able to understand the true meaning of feedback. After five months of learning and development, I earned my internship at LinkedIn as a data analyst. I was so excited and nervous for my internship. I gained a lot of knowledge, whether it was my soft skills or my technical skills. I was learning something new each day. I, wouldn't, I would like to tell you a story my manager, Nidhi Shah, told me. Three people were doing the same construction work when asked what they were doing. One person said, I am laying bricks. The second person said that I am building a wall. And the third person said, I am building a home. 
The moral of the story is, vision drives a person's attitude. My experience at Europe and LinkedIn was life-changing. In fact, I'll be staying at LinkedIn as a business analyst. <laughs> Shout out to the Europe alumni at LinkedIn. All your stories are testaments to closing the opportunity divide. What I want you to take out of my story is, I'm not a victim. My life was meant to be like this. No matter what struggles you go through, always remember, someone is fighting for their last breath or someone is wishing to have your life. Be thankful and appreciate what you have. I would like to end my speech with, thank you to my family and and everyone that helped me during my journey at Europe and LinkedIn. <laughs> I really appreciate my coach, Abe Menor, for always setting high, expe high expectations and allowing me to aim for the stars. Thank you to my manager, Nidisha, and the, and the infrastructure business operation team for giving me the chance to increase my skills and get me ready for the real world. Thank you, thank you to all the staff at Europe for supporting us and helping us dream big. Thanks to Jared Quimson, Beja Gonzalez, Paris Larazzo, and Dazel Longmore for making my internship fun. <laughs> Lastly, Remember, vision drives a person's attitude. Don't let your vision be the bricks or the wall. Class 18, we are building a home. Class 18, we are building homes. Congratulations, class 18, we did it. Why you? Why you?